Hey everyone, Kareem right here, and today I have Anthony Lejeune, who's a professional footballer who has played with Stomp Town AC in the Nisa League, and he's currently on trials with another Nisa team. But, but before we dive into that, um, Anthony, how's it going? Um, it's been good. It's been really good. I mean, I'm currently in a new location right now. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's it's pretty nice out here. Like. Um, the weather, I came straight from Canada, so you can imagine right now there's a bunch of snow in Canada here in Phoenix, um, not so much. So it's pretty nice. It's cool to be out here. Nice. We're wishing you luck out there. Hopefully you sign a new pro contract. Um, mm -hmm. Before we dive into that, I just, I just, I just want to mention how I found you. So I was on YouTube. I'm going mm -hmm. through some new soccer videos and I came across your YouTube channel. I'm like, I got to reach out to Anthony. Hopped on Instagram, I reached out to you, and now it's it's awesome to have you on. So it's a pleasure to have you on, man. Thank, thanks, thanks for having me, bro. I know, like, we've been meeting to do this meeting for a while, um, but my schedule has been kind of all over the place, and I'm happy. I'm happy that we're able to work it out and and get on here and be able to talk. So it's cool. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the the trial that you're on right now. How's that going? Uh, so it's been it's been okay, honestly. Um. Like, I've had better trials, if I'm being honest with you. I've had days where um, I've gone into trials and I've been really confident, you know, and I've gone in there and the coaches right away have known that my quality. Um, now, um, this, this, this current experience was kind of tough for me a little bit. Um, my, first, my first week on legit, my first day, um, I ended up hurting my right ankle. Um, I twisted my ankle. So when I was training in Canada, we were training – um, on turf pretty much every day and then I came down here was on grass so it was just a little bit of a change for me um, and you know well it, even if you're a quality player sometimes that can you know that can affect your um, your play so like legit the first day I hurt my ankle twisted my ankle and, and obviously I'm on a trial so I don't want to I don't want to look like um, like a bit soft or whatnot so I just I just dug it out. I put my head down, wrapped my ankle, and then just kept training. So as the days gone by, I've been getting more and more confident, more and more better, um, and showing a little bit of that quality every once in a while. Um, I'm still not at 100%, but my ankle has felt a lot better, and I've been able to play some games with the team, some preseason games. So it's, um, it's definitely getting better, and I think this week is the week that I find out whether I'm staying or what's happening. So it's it's still all up in the air, but it's been it's been getting better and better day by day. Yeah, hopefully you sign that new pro contract. That would be super exciting. And it's it's a new team. Is it is it okay if I mention that it's a new team in the Nice League? That's it. Oh yeah. Well I, I yeah, well at this point I think people might know if we if we if we say it's a new team, they'll 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 probably be able to switch it up and see. Um so yeah, it's a newer team uh, here in the Nisa. Um, and it's a good team, though. They have a lot of experienced players on the team, and honestly, the quality and the level of the team. When I first got here, I was like, "Wow, this is this could be a team that um, you know that can definitely compete." So, um, just exciting things, I guess. Nice. So, you know, going a little bit back in time, Anthony, how did you get involved into the beautiful game? Um, so I started playing when I was really, really young. I think when I was four years old. And so um, not a lot of people know, but I was actually born in Florida and my family are from Haiti. And so every summer I would go to Haiti on my travel back home. And whenever I go back home in the summer um, in Haiti, we'd be playing a lot of a lot of soccer. And I think that's when I really fell in love with the game, just growing up through it um, and just kind of seeing the older guys playing. And so started really young and I is just I've just played it since I was really, really young. I think my. My dad influenced me a little bit when I was younger because he used to play um, soccer as well. And it just became, um, you know, a big thing for me. Nice to mention Haiti for the viewers that haven't been there. What's Haiti like? Right. Because you hear Haiti, but people don't they can't put an image. To, to yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's tough, too, because a lot of times when people hear about Haiti from North America, it's like a poor country. You know, a lot of times people think um, not a lot of things happen in Haiti. But honestly, for me. Um, whenever I used to visit, it would be the best times of my life. Like I'd go, uh, have a really good time, a lot of really nice people. Once you go to the right places, you know, a lot of beautiful sceneries. A lot of times, once you see Haiti on like TV or you see it on the news, it's 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 talking about the bad things. But I feel like a lot of people 
um, don't really get to see the really nice things, you know, the, all the amazing people that I've met um, and amazing family pe- uh, family members that are from there. So it's just, um, it's a really good time, honestly. Nice. Yeah, it's good to hear. So can you like take us on your, your like your life path, the journey to pro, right? Because you started playing at four years old and then obviously there was different teams that you played on with, in between. Uh, if you went to school, mention that and then, you know, leading up to your first signing. Right. Okay. So, um, like I said, I started playing when I was really, really young. Now, um, I think when I started playing competitively, I was about 13. I think that's when I played on my first competitive team. And it was actually in Scarborough um, when I played for the team called Scarborough Blizzards in Toronto. Mm. So I moved to Toronto in 2008, and that's when I really wanted to get into soccer. So I started playing competitively there before I was playing just house league or I was just playing just rec league with some of, my, some of my friends. I got recruited to play on the Scarborough Blizzards, and that's when I was like, oh, you know what, maybe this is something that I'd like to do in the future. And then after playing on the Scarborough Blizzards, we ended up moving to Ottawa. So I moved to Ottawa in 2010, and um, I was really blessed because a lot of the people that were around me, they, they also shared the same dream, so they wanted to be pro or they wanted to play at the highest level possible. So um, moved to Ottawa in 2010. I started playing for a local club called Ottawa Royals. It wasn't the highest level you could play, but um, at the time I just, I mean, like I wasn't, I wasn't the best player uh, at the time. So um, I got there playing at Ottawa Royals. I think the first year was in 2015 or 2014 when I joined Ottawa Fury. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the club, um, but they used to play in the USL and also NASL. And so that was my very first competitive um, travel team. So we would travel into the States a lot. And and during that time was um, when I really, really wanted to, you know, um, travel and, and be a pro because like I told you, I was blessed. A lot of the people that were around me, um, they all shared the same dream. You know, they all wanted to be professional. So um, I remember even while I was training with Ottawa Fury, playing with a team, um, I had a couple of my boys that we would train with every single day. We do double days. And so we really, really trained and grinded out um, throughout those two years that I played with the Fury. Um, so play with the Fury. And then from the Ottawa Fury, uh, I mean, I think I was one of the first few academy players to start training with the NSL team. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the, the NSL league, but um, it was a professional league before that was probably considered as a second division, but um, a lot of really quality players. What is it? What is that? What is this? NSL. NSL. National Association Soccer League. So it was like, there was MLS and then there was NASL and then there was USL. Wow. So there was a lot of really good quality players um, in that league. Do you know what happened to that league? Because, you know, now USL is, we have USL Championship, which is Division 2 and then USL 1, which is Division 3. So what happened to NASL? Right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened. I guess they kind of just like, just end of the league. I don't know what happened because during the time I was young, I was still 17 or 18 and I never played any games, but I was training with the first team, um, with the Ottawa Fury first team while I was playing with the academy. Um, and so I got to meet, I got a pleasure to meet a lot of those guys and a lot of quality players. Um, so I'm not sure what happened to that league. I kind of, I think it just died out, but it was definitely um, a top, a top league for people around in the area. And so um, that was a huge experience. And I think that was one of like my first, actual pro experiences you know where I got to see um pro players how they play how they train and basically how they live um and it was a great experience and from there um I ended up going off to um France so me and my close friend were like you know what let's go to France um let's try and leave and see what happens you know chase the dream but at the time I was 17 and 18 I didn't realize um all the things all the politics and visas and all the things you need in order to go um, you know, to, to Europe to play. And so it, it kind of hit us hard because we left everything that we had behind here in, um, well, in Ottawa at the time. And then um, it wasn't successful, obviously. I ended up going back home. And when I got back home, I was like, well, what, what, what are my next steps going to be? And I'm 18 at the time. And then um, that's when OPSM was um, about to start. And so one of my really close friends, Godwin, he, who is the OPSM agent now. Um, so I used to play with his younger brother. And then he started up OPSM and told me, you know what, maybe it'd be a good route for you to go to school. So then I was like, you know what? Yeah, let me go into school, um, play for two years, and then go from there and try and, you know, um, chase that professional contract. So I played at a school in Ottawa called Algonquin College. 
Um, it, I, it was at the time, I think, one of the best teams that you could play on in the division. Um, so I played for them. I had a really, really successful rookie year. I got rookie of the year. I made the all-star team. Um, and it was just a really good experience for me to be able to flourish and, and get better and better. You know, you could see um, all the time that I spent training or all the time that I spent putting into soccer really, really um, improved my game. So first year was good. Second year as well, we made um, to nationals both years. Um, so it was good experience. And then from there, that's when I, I guess I signed my first professional contract. I went over to New Zealand and I played in the first division. Um, and so a lot of times soccer players don't, um, a lot of times, sorry, people who are outside looking into soccer players, they don't see how much of a turbulence like the soccer career is. So I signed my first pro contract in New Zealand in 2018. So I left, I didn't even finish my year of, of college. Um, I left during my second semester and I left. I was like, you know what, maybe it's good for me to go experience new things, travel all the way across the world to New Zealand. You can imagine they're like 17 hours ahead. So took like a 35 hour, like a total of uh, like plane uh, trip from Ottawa, went all the way to um, New Zealand and then started playing in the first division there now. Um, so I'm an American citizen. I have an American passport, but I lived in Canada at the time. And so the visa that we had applied for, um, it got mixed up for some reason because I give in a, a Canadian address with an American passport. So they were just kind of confused. So they ended up letting me into the country. Um, and I, we figured out that, you know, they were just trying to work on my visa. So then everything was going good. The team set me up. Um, I had a host family that I was staying with. Everything was going really, really well. And then um, things hit the wall. So um, immigration con contacted me and told me that um, basically during the time that I was there, I had overstayed a couple of days and my visa wasn't approved. So you could imagine I'm in New Zealand and I, and I stayed a co overstayed a couple of days and I'm like, like, what am I going to do? Like, I don't want to go back home. I'm not ready because I, I, I came all this way. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick around here. And the closest place to New Zealand at the time was Australia. Um, and so I had a couple good friends who were playing in the Australian Second Division League. And I was like, let me just go there and then just really try and push and see what happens from there. So I ended up going from New Zealand to um, Australia. So Australia, first couple of weeks were really, really tough. I didn't have um, a place to stay. Um, so a lot of times I'd be um, staying in hotels or hostels and and basically just um, really try and grind it out because I didn't have a club. You know, imagine I, w I had a really good setup in New Zealand and then everything just just kind of ended. So went to Australia uh, first couple months. Like I said, first couple weeks were really, really tough and then ended up finding a club there that was in the second division. And um, the manager at the time, he was really interested in helping me. So um, he, he, he really helped me. He started finding... Uh, for me, for a place to stay, started helping me a little bit now. Um, same thing with Australia for if you obviously want to go play overseas and you don't have, um, you know, that passport of that country, you need a visa, right? So the only the only amount of time I could spent there was three months. So I spent three months in Australia, um, played a couple games towards the end of the season. And then this was around August time of 2018 when it was time for me to go back home. So um, I went back home, I recuperated. And then the, about this time, OPSM started gaining more connections and having more contacts to um, different levels and different teams. And so I played. Um, after playing in Australia, I went back home. Um, the club that I was training for, it was called South Hobart FC. They wanted me to come back for the 2019 season. So um, I think around November time, they wanted me to come into the preseason. Um, so I was like, you know what, let me go. Um, I'll go into preseason leave to Australia um, and basically do preseason with them. So I did that. Um, so around 2018, November time, I'm in Australia um, doing preseason with this team, traveling into Melbourne. Um, it was going really, really good. Um, I was fit at the time. Um, I was training a lot every single day. But one thing that was really tough for me was being away from my family for so long, you know, because I had been already away for so long, for six months, and then leaving at a time like my during my birthday. So my birthday was in Australia. Um, also, I missed Christmas that year with my family. And, you know, it's so important to be with family. So it was tough. Like the soccer was good, but it was really, really tough to be far away from my family. Yeah. And so 
in 2019, I was planning on, on playing with South Hobart in the second division. But um, that's when um, my agent called me, Godwin called me, and Jeff called me. They told me, you have a chance to play in the USL, um, USL championship. Um, if you want to come on trial, you can come on trial in Tulsa. So I flew from Australia. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. I, I just want to track, track back a little bit before we go too far no, out of yourself. Yeah. You went to New, Z New Zealand and yeah. you had a, a visa issue, which, which is crazy because you had, a, as you mentioned, a nice setup over there. So did you have a contract with the first team in New Zealand? Yeah, so I, that was my first, that was like my first pro contract that I signed. I had a contract with them um, for me to play there for the whole season. So I was meant to be there for 12 months. Uh, or nine months, however long the season was going to go on. So I had that contract. But with New Zealand, they have really, really strict guidelines with their um, tourists and their travel visa. So in order for me to stay that long, I needed a um, certain type of visa for me to go there. Do you understand what I mean? And the whole time where I thought it was being processed, it actually got denied because I sent my American passport with a Canadian address. So they were just kind of confused. and so. Um, ended up getting denied which was kind of crazy which happens a lot it happens a lot of times to soccer players in their career so I did have a contract with them and so that's why the club they did everything to try and help me stay but um, I couldn't stay um, and then they helped me go to um, Australia and so that's when I ended up in Australia basically got it that, yeah I mean visas are a headache they take long it's a long process I've I faced the visa issue in in, uh, in England and France so I, I definitely know the problem know the experience and problem with saying that it uh, did you get into any trouble or you know when they when the immigration called you and said hey you overstayed and right. you have to leave the country what was that process like yeah so basically um i didn't get any in any trouble but like i said new zealand they're really strict about their rules about having players coming in uh, or having tourists and people coming from outside of the country to live into New Zealand. I didn't get in any trouble, but I overstayed a couple of days, not realizing that um, my visa was up. And so basically my plan, my original plan was to come back into New Zealand um, and to play with a club that I had originally signed with. But when I left, since I had originally overstayed a couple of days, they didn't let me come back. They wouldn't let me come back into New Zealand. You know what I mean? Like if I tried to fly back in or um, if I tried to reapply, they wouldn't have accepted me. So not necessarily that I got in trouble, but um, it closed off the door to New Zealand for me um, for at least that year for me to go back and play because um, they had denied my visa. Yeah, got it. Okay. That's good that you didn't get in any trouble. I know sometimes these countries, they could get a little hectic with those type of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> some people get deported even, bro. It's crazy. Yeah. Mad thing. So you went to, from New Zealand, you went to Australia and then in Australia, you see you were doing like a whole bunch of jumping around. Um, you weren't in a, like a stable position in Australia, but I'm, I'm assuming here that you gained a lot of experience and, and knowledge from Australia. Yeah, I did. I gained a lot of, like a lot, a lot, a lot, bro. Like it, it, it just goes to show you that how hard it is to really make it. You know, I learned so much about, um, not only myself, but about other people as well. I made, made so many different connections, met a bunch of different new people while I was in Australia because, um, I was really trying to connect with as many people as I could. And um, the city that I was in was um, Hobart, a really small city. So a lot of people knows everyone. And the soccer isn't the best there, but it's a good platform for people to step up to go uh, to the next level. You know what I mean? So I learned a lot during the time that I was there. Um, and like I told you, it was it was tough. It was tough because um, I wasn't settled. So I didn't know where I was going to. Some nights I didn't know where I would stay, where I would sleep. Um, so until finding that club to help me out. Um, and that's basically, you know, like how it is for most people. And I think it really, really helped me, you know, how I was talking about going from Australia then to um, Tulsa. It really, really helped me because it made me, it made me realize how bad I wanted to be a pro, made me realize how bad I wanted to get to that next level. And so going through all that, it definitely wasn't easy and it, it helped me a lot. Got it. Shout out to the guys at OPSM Pro. We did an interview with them. You guys. Oh, you did? That out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did you? Who did uh, you Jeff. Oh, Jeff. When did you do the interview with him? Uh, maybe last month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff. Uh, yeah. That's. Uh, <laughs> I speak with Jeff. Jeff is like my older brother. I speak with him every day. Godwin is my um, agent, um, but they're, they're 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 like my older bros. So 
Um, I've known them for a while. And I actually played with Jeff with, at the Ottawa Fury. That's how we met. Um, so basically, basically, yeah. So imagine, I think, at the story, well, where we caught up to, we're at, we're in Australia, right? No, we're in Australia. Not. Yeah, so, yeah. So we're in Tulsa, um, but from Australia. So 2019, actually, Jeff and Godwin, they were the both, they were both the ones who helped me. Um, they funded my flight from Australia all the way to Tulsa. So I got to Tulsa and then um, I was staying with Jeff at the time because he had signed to the team. He was on the team. So he came to pick me up from the airport, brought me um, to his house and whatever. And going into that trial, bro, like the things that I, I, I went through in Australia, like now that I think about it from now, um, my experience, what I think about it is like going from Australia to Tulsa, I didn't have anything else in my head. Like when I think about it now, I didn't have, there was no backup plan. There was no, like, it was like, I'm going for trial on this team and I'm going to make the team. There was no, like, you know, and I think about it now and I'm like, well, it's kind of crazy because I didn't even have like another opportunity or nothing. Like there was nowhere else that I could have gone. So I went there, um, went to Tulsa um, on trial. And after three days, I think the coach was really impressed because I don't know what it was, but I don't know if you've ever had those those situations where sometimes you'll do things or you play a certain way and you're kind of like, whoa, like, like you didn't think you could do this type of stuff, right? So I'm guessing, you know, all the times that I really struggled in Australia, it just really, really made me hungry, you know? So I went into Tulsa. I went into the um, into the trials very hungry, um, aggressive, you know, good on the ball. And I think after three days, um, the coach wanted to sign me. They were really interested in me. And so at the time I was, it was my first, pro contract in America and so um I was getting signed as a second left back so like I, I mean I wasn't expecting to play much but the coach really liked me he liked the energy and he liked um that the guys um got along well with me he liked that I fit in the team and so basically when I went um there I was supposed to be the second left back but um going into the season I think the first left back he got hurt and injured and so I played um, I think I played throughout my whole season that year. I played 14 games. Uh, and so um, I was really nervous, like going into my first my first year. But for some reason, I I, I just like it never really um, affected me on the field, you know. Um, and so I ended up playing really well. We didn't have the best year with Tulsa that year. Um, you know, the team didn't do as, as well as we wanted it to be. Um, and so that was my first, I guess, year playing as a pro in America, like officially. So, nice. Um, nice. You mentioned, you mentioned a, a really powerful mind state of just being only focused on that one goal and like there was no other distractions or anything else that was going on in your mind. So that's, mm -hmm. that's super powerful. Mm -hmm. that, that's, well, that's a huge thing. And too, like a lot of younger soccer players, you know, for the younger soccer players who are listening to this and who are listening, the mental aspect plays such a huge part on your career. Um, because mentally, another thing that killed me in the USL um, 2019 was um, I like I wasn't consistently focused. You know, like when I got there, it was like I got there. You know what I'm saying? So all the work that I've done before, I, I didn't continue that work or I got distracted or I was doing different things. Because once you start living that life, like it was my first year as a pro, we traveled with the team. I got to see so many different places, got to do so many different things. You know, but I feel like my focus, my mental strength could have been a lot better during that year. And who knows, like maybe I might have stayed in the USL championship, you know, and continue to play there. So a lot of times like younger players, they they overlook the, the mental aspect part of the game. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty interesting that you mentioned that, right? Like, uh, like, you know, thinking or looking out to the inside as an outsider, you would assume me speaking that, you know, a club would help with the player and keeping that player disciplined. But it seems that if you get that lifestyle change and there's, uh, it's up to the player to keep that discipline. Not. That's interesting. Right. I don't know how it is now, but is, has it changed? Like are the teams more on top of players now or is it the same? No, no, it's still the same. Cause you got to think about it. Once you sign a pro contract, right? You, we're all men. So even if you're a younger player playing, you're still men. Like maybe younger players, you know, if they're 16, 17, 18, they're getting more guidance. But we're all men, right? So you have to be able to take care of yourself, right? You have to be able to know um, what's going to benefit you 
in your games, in your training. So they don't really do much to stay on top of you. Whereas like, they'll take care of you on the field, right? They'll have your recovery sessions. They'll have all that types of stuff for you once you come into work, right? But then it's what you do outside of work, right? They can't, they can't babysit players who are playing in that level um, and making sure that you're not going out every day or you're not getting into bad things. You know what I mean? So it's, it's really up to you and it's, it's still the same. Um, uh, obviously, it's, it's tough for people to, to go from playing at a certain level to then go into the pro level. For me, I never really got that like, whoa, like I can't believe I made it this far. But I could imagine players who go to the MLS or players who go to, you know, um, Division One clubs in Europe, like the lifestyle gets 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 kind of crazy, you know, and mentally you can easily forget um, and get distracted. So, hundred point, hundred percent. That that's a, it's a great point that I, I haven't come across yet in the interview, and it's the first time. So, you know, thank you for sharing that, and that, that, that was awesome. So, Anthony, like, I, like you know, just share with us, like, how did it feel? Like you're signing your first pro contract, like this is the dream, and you achieved it. So, how did it feel for you? It felt amazing. It felt really, really good. I remember I had the contract in my hand and I went to the change room. And another thing too, the guys that I met that year were amazing. Like they really helped me. They guided me. Cause when I came into um, the trials, I told you I was so focused, you know, I was like, yo, we're already doing two a day. It's like training twice a day with our team. I was like, I'm going to do three a day. It's like, that's how like, I wanted to like go so hard, you know? And the, the guys were like, no bro, like chill out. Like you can't be doing yeah. three days. Be like your body's gonna get tired you know you have to rest like you're already working hard enough you know but that's how like the mentality that i had when i got there you know what i mean and so i was like i was like oh i'm gonna do three days i'm gonna do that um so some of the guys guided me and i remember i had i went into the locker room and i had my contract and then the guys were like is that your contract i was like yeah they're all like hyping me up hey, hey, hey. you know like uh, getting me excited and stuff and it just felt really good it honestly felt like there was a big like like weight lifted off my shoulders you know, it felt amazing. But I think the most ex like amazing experience that I had that year was when I played my first game. So um, my first game, I came off the bench, um, which what happened was we're in Orange County. So we're in L.A. My first time in L.A., Orange County, um, nice weather, amazing people, um, night, a lot of things to see. Um, and so we're we're down to one going into half. Um, and I remember like I was just juggling with the ball kicking the ball just like like kind of nervous but also relaxed at the same time and then I remember the coach came up to me and was like don't come in because don't come in the half to, uh into changing room because you're going on and I remember I was just like 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 I was nervous but at the same time like I was like excited it's like a weird feeling like I was like nervous but so excited at the same time and then I was like okay so then half second half came on and I was getting ready to sub in you know I'm, a, I'm walking up to the half and I couldn't believe like the whole time like I'm about to come in um but I was still focused and so as I'm about to go in like I hear people yelling go Anthony go Anthony like yelling and I'm like what like I don't even uh at the time I'm in Orange County I'm like I don't know anyone here like who could know me who could be yelling my name and so like I turn around and you obviously know Matt Sheldon right? you know Matt Sheldon yeah yeah Matt Sheldon yeah, yeah so so um Mimi like his wife now um I look around and I see Mimi and her parents just like yelling and cheering me on and I'm like, wow, like, this is cool. So, like, I run into the field, and then we are down 2-1. Um, and then we ended up, like, the team started playing really well. I was playing at the, at the left-back position. I did well, and we ended up winning 5-2 or 5-3. Like, the game finished 5-2, 5-3. And so we ended up winning. Like, we went down from a 2-1 loss to then winning. And I remember I was so, like, excited. Like, in the change room after, everyone was super excited. And it was just, like, one of the best memories that I've had. And even just being in, in in Orange County in LA at the time, it was just um, a crazy experience, you know? So that's that's basically, those were like 2019, those were my highs where it was like, wow, this is this is amazing. That, and then also when um, we played New Mexico, um, we lost, sadly, we lost 2-1. But um, when they scored against us, they had like 13,000 people in the fans. Wow. And when New Mexico scored against us, it was like, I was like shocked. It was so wow. loud and hear everything like so like around me and it, um, the goal was against us but it was just like wow like kind of stunning energy me. right you know yeah the energy was was sick so it was it was a good experience honestly to, uh, throughout the 2019 I learned a lot and I think the biggest thing that I can I could take I took from 2019 was like the intensity of 
um, everyday training, you know, like you're coming in, it's a battle, but like there was, so I can't even tell you how many fights there were that year. Like not even like fights where people are throwing hands or like getting mad, but like on the field, you know, it's intense. Like you're coming in and you want to win. You know, one thing that I took um, from that year was just, was just like the intensity in training. Every time you play, you want to win, you know, you want to grind it out. So that was basically my first year as a pro in 2019. Sounds exciting, man. You mentioned Matt Sheldon. Uh, yeah. are, you, are you still connected with him? Yeah, that's my guy. I talk to him every once in a while. I actually, um, this past off season, I went to his wedding. Um, and it was oh, wow. Fun. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Like he had his wedding in San Diego. So I went with him, um, went to see him. And then last year I did, um, I like I had a preseason with him. He brought me down to Portland. So I lived with him with the, for a couple of weeks. And, but yeah, that's the guy. Matt Sheldon. Yeah, I was trying to, I've watched, like, even before I started doing interviews, I've watched a couple of his videos in the past. And then, uh, like, right. just, I, I did an interview before he moved to his new team with, uh, with Burke. And I asked yeah. him, I reached out to Matt. I reached out to Burke because I seen Burke in a video with him. And yeah. then now I'm going to ask you if you can reach out to him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I can, podcast. I, can, I can reach out to him, bro. If you can get Matt on the podcast, that's the guy you'd want to get. You know, that's the guy that's inspired me to start my YouTube and he's the guy that's helped me a lot, um, you know, throughout my YouTube and, and obviously um, in, my, in my life. He's a, he's a guy, bro. Nice. You know, a lot of players look up to Matt and look up to you. So what advice would you give to players that want to go pro? I would say I would say a couple of things that I could say, honestly, is, is first thing, obviously, is to make sure you're working hard. You know, um, if you're doing the right things, you're working hard, improve on those things work on your weaknesses, but also work on your strengths, you know, for like for me, for instance, my weaknesses are my athleticism. So those are the things that I really need to focus on to work on. My strengths are probably my technical ability. Now, you also want to be working on your strengths because we're never going to be perfect, right? So you want to make sure you're working on your weaknesses, but also working on your, on your strengths, all right, Just to get better. And the second thing I would say is honestly, be patient. Because mm -hmm. For me, like I was chasing that pro contract. I went to New Zealand. I went to Australia. I went to France. I went to so many different places. And I guess it seemed like it never worked out for me in those places until it was really time for me to to be that pro. You get what I'm saying? So um, patience is a virtue. If you're just, if you're doing the right things and you're being patient, your time will come, you know? And then also obviously networking, connecting with people. Obviously something like this is amazing. Like I... I met you now, you know, you make different connections, you can touch different people, connect to different coaches, different players, and just really get yourself out there, you know, because soccer is all about networks and connections. Right now. So those are the things that I would say. 100% great points. Um, how, how old were you back in 2019 with, you know, signing your first professional contract? I was 22. 22. And that's yeah, 22. 22 is pretty late. Yeah, 22. So this is the thing. This is my thing. So I'll tell you what it is. So in North America, if you think about it, 22 is is not late. Because in North America, if we're talking about North America, a lot of players, what do they do? They'll go to school, right? They'll go to school from when they're 18. Yeah. They'll do four years or whatever. They'll do university, especially in America, because people can get drafted. So they'll do a maximum of four years in university, correct? So mm -hmm. if you're 18 and then you turn 22, right, four years, um, four years later, a lot of times, if you look at it, most professional soccer players in America, they'll sign when they're 22, 23, 24. It's like after their college careers. You know what I mean? So it's late in North America, but obviously in Europe, that's like, that's pretty late, you know? Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense when you put it that way. So I, I guess it's the European taking over in my mind then. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah it has to, bro. Because, you know, European, European football, bro, there's nothing, there's nothing like it, obviously. You know, <laughs> it's still good for the 22. Like I'm about to train 22 uh, this year. So like, that's, that's, okay. that's, it's always motivational. Like when I hear people say they signed at 22 or 23 or 25, it's, it's motivational for my, uh, you know, not only for myself, but for other people that are that age that come across our, our mm -hmm. YouTube channel and, and watch our content. So that's, that's awesome. Bro. Um, and then leading towards the end here, mm -hmm. you know, what's your most, memorable soccer moment in your life my most memorable soccer moment mm -hmm. 
Oh, and I forgot to mention because I see this on uh, Instagram. Sorry, I know, I know. I, yeah, I just, you can. I just, no, you can, you can. Yeah. You know, you're um, you're friends with Alfonso Davis too. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, not friends, not really friends, but I got to meet him. I got to meet him. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, okay. Sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll say. No, no, no. Ask the question though. No. So this is the thing. So last last year, I played, um, I played in the USL too, um, and so. I mean, I kind of missed the whole year of 2020 during my career. Do you want me to cover 2020 or do you want me to uh, you, like skip a little bit? I have, I, I, I have to go in like three minutes, in three minutes. Okay, okay, I'll let's shoot. Okay, okay, so sounds good. Okay, make it like so a long story short, long story short. Okay, let's make a long story short. Long story short, 2020, I didn't play because of the COVID year. Um, I was in America. I was on trial with a couple clubs. Boom, had to go back home because of COVID. So didn't play in 2020, in 2020. So I spent the whole year not playing. Um, during that time, a lot of things happened outside of foot, footy. A lot of things happened, okay? So then Matt comes in in 2021, and he's like, yo, come over, come to Portland, come train with me, da-da-da-da-da. So I go from from Canada, from not playing, not doing anything, always on lockdown, quarantining. Matt brings me in, um, train with him, do a lot of YouTube videos with him. Um, he helps my channel grow, helps me with a lot of networking stuff, and then started playing USL2. So then I signed with a USL2 team through OPSM and then on that team um what is one of my close friends now his name's Abe Abraham du- uh, Dukley he was good friends with Alfonso Davies like boys since growing up and so during our season um Alfonso had a game in Chicago so Sorry, you said you said was or still is there still is they're boys yeah okay. they're like they're like really they're like really really good friends okay and so um like like they play in the academy together so then uh, Alfonso had a game in Chicago and then we were in South Bend which was um, only like an hour away from Chicago. And he was like, yo, would you guys want to meet Alfonso Davies? I was like, what? I was like, yeah, that, oh, for sure, bro. So then we went on one of our days off, uh, day offs, and we met Alfonso Davies. So like I met him, um, like we had lunch together, really cool guy. Uh, I challenged him to two touch. Um, and so I don't know, uh, hopefully I can play him in the future in two touch and I can beat him. So <laughs> that's how I basically met Alfonso Davies. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've seen it on Instagram. I want to ask you about it. And you know what? After this interview later on, I'm going to go through your YouTube channel more and like look at what you guys did. Because you mentioned Matt helped you with the networking and then you obviously did your thing. So that's cool. And you know what? Something just happened to me. I'm noticing that Matt's connected to OPSM. You're connected to OPSM and then OPSM is a whole network. So that's, I just got All right. connected. All right. But yeah. All right. Um, that's awesome yeah. it's awesome to connect with you because you know i'm connected with opsm connected to you now mm-hmm. so it's, it's cool but yeah going back to my last question sorry what's your <laughs> most memorable soccer moment my honestly my most memorable soccer moment like i think i like i told you it already i i kind of went off topic a little bit but um was probably my first professional win was in orange county mm. or um playing in front of when we played against Real monarchs um, I started and played 90 minutes in front of like 15,000 fans, which was pretty cool. Um, and I think those are probably my most um, memorable um, moments, you know? Nice. Okay, well, we'll just leave it here to the last 10 fun questions and then uh, that'll be it. Yeah, sorry. I, I kind of went on and babbled a little bit. I didn't I didn't know you were on a time crunch. Oh, no worries. Yeah, I, I'm sorry I didn't mention that. I, I'm, I'm no usually not. It's just I have some other things I got to take care of. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, okay, so they're just like 10 fun questions, and like speed questions. Okay. So you got to answer them super duper fast. So we'll try to like fly right. through them. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay, who's your favorite team? Arsenal. Favorite player? Uh, Mesut Oza. Favorite cleats? Oh, I'm a Puma guy now. I like Puma Ultras now. Uh, but what well, originally? Uh, uh, nah, F50, F50. No, no, listen. Listen, F50 Adi Zeros. F50 Adi Zeros, my favorite. Uh, right now, I like Puma. So. There we go. Favorite artist? <laughs> uh, Rod Wave. Ready. Uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi, 100%. The first, let's just say me and you, we're about to play FIFA. We got like 10K on the line. Who's your go-to team? Uh, Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund. Nice. Two goals in a game or one goal and one assist? Uh, one goal, one assist. Last two, would you rather score a free kick or a PK last minute goal? Oh, free kick, 100%. <laughs> if you were a coach and you were able to sub in any player in history, 
alive or not alive, who would that be? Oh, oh I would do Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho, yes, sir. Ski. <laughs> Anthony, uh, before we go, I just want to thank you for taking the time for joining us on the One Stock Nation podcast today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me, bro.